In a story, what makes someone a hero? Is it their actions or principles? The decision to do what's right no matter what? Or their ability to empathize with those around them? Sometimes it's hard to define exactly what a hero is, because it's incredibly difficult to determine what's right and wrong. There are certain actions we can very clearly define as bad, like unjustified violence, and some that very intuitively seem like the right thing to do, like helping someone in need. But the closer we get to the middle, the gray areas, the less clear it becomes. When good actions have been weaponized to take advantage of those who are empathetic, is it wrong to assume strangers have malicious intent? Violent worlds reinforce selfishness, self-preservation. So for today's video, a hero is going to be someone who acts selflessly, despite overwhelming circumstance that pressures them not to. And if we take a second to analyze that circumstance, the world The Last of Us takes place in, it becomes clear that the habit to be selfless has been violently removed from society. You can't blame someone in The Last of Us for acting to preserve themselves. And while there are exceptions, they prove the rule more than break it. They stand out in clear contrast to the norms of the world our characters live in. With the finale of Last of Us now aired, there's no more questions left about how the adaptation will approach telling the story. Many people who played the first game have issues with the way the story was told. And some of those criticisms I hold too. I think you can very fairly look at the pacing of the show and point to clear shortcomings. One of the sad parts about this for me is I really liked when they stepped away from the primary story. I think these adventures away from Ellie and Joel added beautiful context. However, there just wasn't enough time. Even with the current way The Last of Us played out, I wouldn't take away those stories. I just wish we had had more episodes to explore the rest of the story. There were many moments where I was 30 minutes into an episode and I was disappointed at the pacing. It felt like not enough had happened because I was so protective of the time we got each week to experience the story. Making a show is really complicated. It's easy to criticize something and assume blame. I don't know whose fault it was to have 9 episodes in a season rather than 12, or who made the decision to keep certain episodes a specific length. It could be a multitude of things, the budget or the studio, the writers or directors, how much footage they had to work with after a shoot, or moments that they thought would work but didn't. Something to remember is that HBO was gambling to some degree with this series. It's easy to see in retrospect how popular it was, but think about all the video game adaptations that failed before The Last of Us. It's hard to know who made the decisions that resulted in my disappointment, but I do wish we had more time to explore the story. Because overall, I loved this show. And one of the most important parts of this story is the ending. So let's take a look at episode 9 of The Last of Us. We open on a scene of a pregnant woman running in a forest, trying to escape. This woman just so happens to be Ashley Johnson, the original voice actor of Ellie. Escaping to a building where fireflies are supposed to be, the infected zombie chasing her breaks into the house. She fights it off, but not before being bit. We now suddenly have a reason to explain Ellie's resistance to the cordyceps. And there's something poetic about Ashley Johnson giving birth to Ellie, passing on the torch. But something I find really fascinating about this moment is that the last couple of weeks when I've made videos about The Last of Us, I kept saying Ellie was born into a violent world. And in this case, she was literally born into a violent world. Her mother was killing a zombie as she was in labor, and minutes after her birth, we hear a gunshot. It's a really strong opening, and once again, I thought it was a great decision. And we use that opportunity to transition to Ellie. Something's up. She just went through a highly traumatic experience, and you can tell that it's bothering her. Joel does his best to distract her, but what do you do after Ellie had been through something so extreme? How do you unpack that? Is it even something you should talk about right away? She needs support, and the best way Joel can offer that is by trying to just make things feel okay. And for the first time in the series, we see Ellie being distant, and Joel trying his best to connect. And there are two clear moments that help Ellie heal throughout this episode. The first is a conversation. Well, I gotta hand it to the army people. They were way better at stitching you up than I was. It was me. I was the guy who shot and missed. Sarah died, and I couldn't see the point anymore. Simple as that. And I wasn't scared either. I was ready. I couldn't have been more ready. I went to pull the trigger, I, I flinched. Still don't know why. 
So time heals all wounds, I guess. It wasn't time that did it. What a remarkable addition. This is part of why I love this show. There's an emotional depth to it that is significant. And Ellie shares what the audience is also thinking. Well, I'm glad that that didn't work out. Me too. It's one of my favorite scenes in the show. One I didn't know I needed. We should probably get going. Yeah. Which leads us to our second scene that helped Ellie heal. One every fan of the game will recognize. A moment of serenity. I know that this scene in the show comes before the other one I just talked about, but this is what breaks Ellie out of her funk. At this point in the game, you've experienced so many hardships, traumas, violence. Hello. You're just constantly fighting to get here. And when you're almost to the hospital, what are you doing? there's a little break. It's all right. Can you hurry up? Come on. A shared moment with a draft that makes things feel like they're going to be okay. A calm before the storm. Because then Ellie's taken. Ellie. Ellie! In my first playthrough of The Last of Us, I remember thinking that the Fireflies were the good guys. The rebellion fighting the fascist government. The people we were getting Ellie to to save the world. But through the journey Joel and Ellie take, we learn something. We realize that the zombies aren't the only monsters, that what humanity has become to survive is terrifying. There are no heroes in The Last of Us. Arlene refused to give Ellie the agency to make her own decision, probably afraid that her hesitancy might get in the way of saving the world. So she instead makes the decision for Ellie. The irony is, Ellie's one of the few characters throughout the entire story that exhibits the traits of a hero. Someone who's selfless, compassionate, and more than anything, grounded in the reality of her circumstance. She says it beautifully in the show. After all we've been through, everything I've done, it can't be for nothing. I know you mean well. I know you want to protect me. You have. And when we're done, we'll go wherever you want. Tommy's, Sheep Ranch, the moon. I'll follow you anywhere you go. But there's no halfway with this. We finish what we started. It's very likely that Ellie would have sacrificed herself to create a potential cure. But the Fireflies aren't heroes. They didn't give her a choice. And in my mind, this isn't self-preservation. This isn't self-defense. This is murder. And when Marlene tells Joel what's happening, she doesn't give him an option. Which is funny, because for Joel, there isn't much of an option anyways. He has to save her. The way they chose to represent this scene was remarkable. The sound fades away, and we're left with a beautiful score. As Joel focuses on one thing, getting back to Ellie and killing anyone who stands in his way. Because while the Fireflies aren't heroes, neither is Joel. They're willing to commit atrocious violence because they believe in what they're doing. We see the return of that selfish selflessness. Joel is willing to do anything to protect Ellie. And while Marlene is trying to save her world, Joel is saving his. When I first finished The Last of Us, I didn't know how to feel. I think it's an ending that makes you think. It's not clean and satisfying. It's complicated and nuanced. If there's anyone you could make a case for being a hero in The Last of Us, it's Ellie. But I don't think she was actually given a chance to be the hero she could have been. Because a couple people trying to do the right thing made decisions for her. And I can't blame them. Trying to save the world is a noble cause. And protecting someone you love, no matter what, it just makes sense. Because in The Last of Us, there are no heroes. But there is love. <laughs>